A warm welcome to you uh, to this online service uh, from Bethesda Saundersfoot in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to be able to gather on this Lord's Day together to worship in our homes. The announcements for the week ahead are as follows. On Tuesday at 6pm, our Bible study and prayer meeting. And then next Lord's Day, our online service will be on YouTube. And at 3 p.m. we shall meet uh, to worship in the chapel. Uh, so those are the announcements for the week uh, ahead. Shall we come before uh, the Lord in prayer? Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this time now of worship on your day. We thank you, O Lord, that you have ordained uh, that this day is to be a day of holy rest. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we come with praise and thanksgiving before you, uh, that, Lord, you would now, in your grace, meet with us. As we gather in our homes, we pray, O oh Lord, that indeed you would fill our hearts with uh, rejoicing this day and with thanksgiving for all that you have done for us for your great salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that you would open our hearts, O Lord, uh, to hear and to receive your word. And that, Lord, uh, this service indeed would do good to our souls. We pray, O Lord, these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 2 and we shall read from verse 23 in Mark chapter 2. Shall we hear God's word? And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. 
And the Pharisee said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did, when he had need, and was unhungered, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. Well, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word this day. Amen.
Shall we now come before the Lord in prayer? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we pray that as we now come to seek your face, that indeed you would still our heart. Take away, O oh Lord, any distracting thoughts, O oh Lord, uh, as we uh, now seek to draw near unto you, our God. We thank you indeed for this opportunity uh, to gather in our homes on this, the Lord's Day. Lord, we would uh, crave to meet with one another, uh, but Lord, we know that is not possible. And so, oh, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would indeed bless our small gatherings in our homes. We pray indeed that uh, by your grace you would enable us now to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, you warn us in your word against worship with our lips alone, with our hearts, O oh Lord, far from thee. We pray that by the Holy Spirit you would indeed now warm our hearts, warm our souls, O oh Lord, in praise and in worship to you, the one true and living God, that we would know, O oh Lord, the experience of David of old when he said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, uh, praise his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Lord, we do confess before you that we are, O oh Lord, so quick to forget all that you have done for us. Lord, you truly do meet all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Again, O oh Lord, as we look back on the week that is past, Lord, how you have blessed us, how you have met with us, how, Lord, you have uh, in your grace and in your mercy poured your gifts upon us. And, O oh, Heavenly Father, we do confess before you uh, how quick we are to forget all your mercies. But, Lord, we pray that you would help us now to recall them, that you would help us, O oh Lord, to remember. You would help us, Heavenly Father, now to give you thanks and praise for all your goodness towards us. We will thank you, O oh Lord, for keeping us, for preserving us, O oh Lord, as we journey through this world. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have fed us, you have clothed us, you have granted us good things. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our spiritual blessings in the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, Heavenly Father, how you have in your mercy planned and purposed our salvation. Lord, we do not deserve to even be looked upon, but Lord, you looked upon us in mercy, even before the foundation of this world, you purposed our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And how, O oh Lord, in your grace you sent him, O oh Lord, into this world. How he, O oh Lord, uh, in his great love, indeed suffered and bled and died for our sins upon Calvary's cross. We thank you, O oh Lord, that he bore our burdens to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Uh, bearing, O oh Lord, uh, not only shame and scoffing, O oh Lord, from the crowds and from men, not only rejected of men, but, O oh, Heavenly Father, we cannot even begin to understand what it meant for the Holy One to bear away our sins. Uh, what it meant for Him who had perfect fellowship with you, the Father, from all eternity, uh, to uh, bear, O oh Lord, your frown uh, and your wrath in uh, the place of sinners upon Calvary's cross. And yet, Heavenly Father, we do believe uh, that there was that hour when he was cut off, as it were, from fellowship with you, when he indeed uh, bore the punishment for all our sins uh, in his own body upon Calvary. Uh, we believe it, O oh Lord, and we thank you for that hour. We thank you for that cry. It is finished. 
Lord, that moment in the history of the world when the salvation of all your people was secured by the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for him who is our Saviour. Help us, O oh Lord, help us, we pray, uh, to increase in our love towards him and indeed in, in our willing obedience to him. We come, O oh Lord, on this Lord's Day, and again, O oh Lord, your word is open before us. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for your word. We thank you that we indeed today uh, are able, O oh Lord, to read your word and to hear your word. Uh, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for that blessing. Help us, O oh Lord, to count our blessings, O oh Lord, the blessings we have of even being able to have an open Bible before us, being able to read your word, being able to hear your word, sermons, and uh, and, and to be able, O oh Lord, to read books, O oh Lord, concerning your word. Oh, how blessed we are. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, uh, that indeed you would grant us help from heaven to receive your word. Uh, we uh, pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that as we study, O oh Lord, this portion from Mark's Gospel this morning, it wouldn't simply be some academic exercise, but Lord, teach us. Teach us, we pray, out of your word. And build us up as your people. Even, O oh Lord, save souls this day in the hearing of your word. We come then, Heavenly Father, and ask that you would give us now expectant hearts as we come uh, to hear your word being preached. O oh Lord, we do come and confess our sins before you. We do, Heavenly Father, mourn for the sins that has that have driven us from your breast. We ask, O oh Heavenly Father, forgiveness and pardon for all our sins. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mightest be feared. We ask, O oh Lord, cleanse our hearts now, and help us, O oh Lord, to lead lives that are worthy of the calling that we have received as your people. Hear us then, we pray, as we come in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen.
to Mark's Gospel and to chapter 2 and verses 23 to the end of the chapter. We continue this morning uh, in the Gospel of Mark. Now Mark's purpose in writing his Gospel was to reveal to us uh, the life and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we might ask that question, who is this? Who is this Lord Jesus Christ? And come to the conclusion that truly he is the Son of God and that he is the one who has come into this world sent by the Father to be our Saviour and that there is salvation uh, found in him and in him alone. And in each uh, of the incidents uh, that Mark records for us in his Gospel, he is revealing uh, more and more to us concerning the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's true of the portion that we have uh, before us this morning, uh, that Mark in verse 28 will teach us that uh, Jesus Christ is also the Lord of the Sabbath. And so uh, he's revealing to us something more of the person and of the work uh, of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we've seen now in Mark chapter 2 especially, uh, Jesus is facing more and more opposition from the religious leaders. Began in Mark chapter 2 and verses 5 to 7 when, if you remember, the Lord Jesus Christ was healing uh, this man sick of the palsy and our Lord said, uh, to him, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the Pharisees <coughs> and the religious leaders were incensed at his words. Who is this that he speaks such blasphemy, they said. Uh, of course, their hearts were hard. Uh, they were blind to see that this truly was the Son of God standing before them with all authority to forgive sins uh, and the Lord demonstrates that in his works he demonstrates that his words truly are uh, right and correct and true that he truly is the Son of God uh, as he works these miracles but the Pharisees they were they were blind to that fact and so the conflict begin begins uh, they are opposed to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ they're opposed to the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're opposed and they criticise him for what he doesn't do. And they criticise him for what he does. We see that in Mark chapter 2. They criticise him, for example, uh, because he eats and dines uh, with publicans and sinners. So they criticise him for things he does. They criticise him for things he doesn't do. Uh, for example, in Mark chapter 2 and verse uh, 18, they criticise him because he and his disciples do not fast. And this criticism and opposition, we'll see as we continue in Mark's Gospel, grows in intensity. Uh, they plan and they plot uh, to uh, destroy him indeed uh, we read this morning in chapter 3 and verse 6 that the Pharisees there even uh, in chapter 3 of Mark uh, go forth and straightway take counsel uh, with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him so even at this point uh, the religious leaders uh, of the day was seeking any means possible to destroy uh, the Saviour. But we come now to a passage this morning from verse 23 to verse 28 of Mark. And again we see in this passage the opposition of the religious leaders of the day. And uh, uh, really we could say that uh, the theme here continues into chapter 3 and it's all about the Sabbath day. 
and all about the religious leaders' perception uh, that the Lord Jesus was breaking the Sabbath. And we're going to look <coughs> at uh, uh, these verses uh, this morning. We'll look at chapter 3 next Lord's Day, uh, but we'll finish chapter 2 this morning. So uh, let's begin uh, then by looking at the accusation that is brought against the Lord Jesus and his disciples. If you look at verse 23, you'll see what that accusation is. And it came to pass that as he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn, and the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And so there is this accusation uh, that is brought uh, by the Pharisees. Why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? So we need to try to understand, first of all, what is the criticism of the Pharisees here. The accusation was that the Lord Jesus Christ permitted his disciples without any rebuke to break the Sabbath. That one day in seven instituted from the dawn of creation to be a day of holy rest for all people. That is the Sabbath. The Sabbath was instituted uh, at creation you can read that in Genesis chapter 2. Uh, the Lord further uh, places it in the moral law, uh, in the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment, to keep the Sabbath day holy. That commandment is still in force today. It has not uh, been uh, uh, put, laid aside in any way by the New Testament. That command is still in force today, although the day has changed from Saturday uh, to Sunday or the Lord's Day. But nevertheless, that command to keep the Sabbath holy is still in force. And uh, that command uh, stated that it was to be a day of rest and no work was to be done on that day. And so the Pharisees here accuse the Lord Jesus and the, his disciples of breaking the fourth command, of, of breaking the Sabbath day. Now what exactly uh, was their criticism? Well, I think there are two things that can be drawn out from their criticism. The first is this, that the Lord Jesus and his disciples were going through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, the Pharisees uh, had uh, made many, many rules concerning the Sabbath. Uh, the Pharisees had devised meticulous rules that had to be kept concerning the Sabbath day. They were man-made rules, but nevertheless, they were rules that the Pharisees insisted that all should keep. And one of which was this, uh, that a man could only walk such and such a distance on the Sabbath day, a Sabbath day journey. And uh, it seems that the Pharisees were accusing the Lord Jesus Christ here of breaking that rule by going through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And secondly, uh, as they went, they were plucking the years of corn. And again, they are man-made rules uh, stated uh, that they were not allowed to do any work on the Sabbath day. And that included plucking and crushing 
uh, years of corn. Uh, these were the, the, the man-made rules these uh, Pharisees and religious leaders had made uh, concerning uh, the Sabbath day. And so the Pharisees said, really, uh, that they had done that which is not lawful. Uh, that meant that they had broken their man-made rules or laws or regulations concerning the Sabbath day. But behind it all, I think I want you to see two things. Uh, behind their criticism, I want you to see two things again. The first is this, that the Pharisees truly believed wrongly. That by keeping all these small, meticulous, man-made rules that in some way they could please God and that they could earn God's favour and that they would be accepted into heaven by God because of what they had done. Uh, they, they could not see, they were blinded to the fact that they had fallen far short of God's standards and to keeping these man-made rules in no way was going to earn them favour before God, but they believed wrongly that it would. And so you see their blindness to their true condition before a holy and a righteous God. They were blind really to their sin. They were blind to uh, the fact that they had uh, fallen far short of the standards uh, of God and that they needed salvation, they needed a saviour in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here they were standing before the one who could save them, who could forgive them of their sins and they were blind to it, uh, believing that keeping these man-made rules could earn them some, some favour before God and yet all their righteousnesses were as filthy rags before a holy God. But the second thing is this, I want you to see the hypocrisy of the Pharisees here. These men were prize hypocrites. Here they came to the Lord Jesus Christ, accusing him of doing that which was not lawful on the Sabbath day, of walking through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and then plucking ears of corn, well, ask yourself the question, how did they know that the Lord Jesus Christ was walking through the cornfields on the Sabbath day? Well, the only way they could know was this, that they themselves were doing what the Lord Jesus was doing. They too were walking through the fields, following him, seeking in any way to, uh, to trip him up, uh, finding any way to accuse him, plot him in any way uh, to, to, uh, to find fault in him. And so here were these Pharisees accusing the Saviour of doing that which was not lawful, and yet they themselves were doing exactly the same and worse. And you see the hypocrisy of the Pharisees at this point, and you'll see it again and again in the Gospel of Mark, uh, Mark that these were, 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 were hypocrites uh, by uh, nature. Of course, the Lord Jesus did not break the Sabbath. We must emphasise that. The Lord Jesus was perfect in every way. He was the one who was without sin. In no way did he break the Sabbath day. Uh, but he did disregard these man-made laws and rules of the Pharisees uh, that had nothing to do with the real keeping of the Sabbath day. So there's the accusation that was brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's look at the answer that the Lord Jesus gave secondly this morning. Let's look at his answer. It's found, isn't it, uh, in verse 25. And he said unto them, 
Have you never read what David did when he had need and was in hunger, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them that were with him. Notice how he begins. I think it's very, very important to look at how the Lord Jesus begins his answer to these Pharisees. He says, have ye not read? Those are very interesting words. Have ye not read? What is he doing? He's pointing the Pharisees to the scripture, to the Bible. You see, they had accused him of breaking the Sabbath. And he brings them back to the Bible. He brings them back to the scriptures. Why? Because ultimately, every question concerning faith and concerning practice is settled by scripture, by the word of God. Here are the very oracles of God. Here is the very word of God. I don't have to remind you this morning that if you have an open Bible before you, you have the very word of of God uh, in your hands, the breathed out inspired word of the living God. Here is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And any question concerning uh, the Christian faith, any question concerning Christian pra practice, any duty that is laid upon man uh, is settled finally by the word of God. It's of supreme importance to emphasize that. Because the Pharisees, you see, judge people by their own uh, standards and by their own man-made rules and by their own man-made regulations. And the Lord Jesus has nothing uh, to do with that. He says, no, no, have you not read? Have ye not read, he says. And he brings them back to the real standard, to the Bible itself. Uh, and you see, we too live in days where, where people uh, say, well, 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 I think this, and I think that, and uh, indeed you, we've got to, Bring people back to the word of God. It's not what you think, but what saith the scriptures? Have ye not read? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? And that's important as you hear sermons, especially in these days, uh, because of the virus that is going around, Many churches are closed and you will hear lots of things online, lots of, of people preaching online, lots of services online, and you will hear a lot of things being said. But how do you judge what is said? Well, you judge what is said by the word of God. Have ye not read? You judge what is being said by the Bible itself. And the Lord Jesus is drawing these Pharisees back to the Bible. And it's very, very important again to emphasize that. You see, these Pharisees believed. They believed by keeping these man-made rules, they could earn favour before God. They believed that a good God would welcome nice people into heaven uh, because those people have tried their best. But is that what the Bible says? Is that what the scriptures say? Well, you say, but, but, but lots of people believe that. Uh, and, and I've heard even preachers say that. But that doesn't matter. What does it matter? What saith the scriptures? Have ye not read? 
underline those words this morning as you hear this sermon uh, as, as, as you think about the Christian faith as you ponder these things underline those words have ye not read you judge everything by the word of God and Jesus brings these people back to the word of God and then he points them to David we haven't time to look at the incident you can read it for yourself in 1 Samuel chapter 21 where David who's on the run from Saul uh, has gathered a band of men who is loyal to him and he finds himself without food and David remembers that there is food to be had in the nearby tabernacle that there was show bread that was meant for the priests and them alone uh, in the tabernacle and so David goes because he's hungry because he and his men are in great need he goes and he asks uh, for that show bread that he might feed his body uh, with that which is necessary and that bread is granted to him that bread is granted to him because he had a basic need to be fulfilled he was hungry his men were were starving uh, and so it was lawful for him to do that and the Lord Jesus is simply teaching these Pharisees forget your man-made rules what does the scripture say the scripture lays down the principle that it is lawful to meet basic needs on the Sabbath day that it is lawful to do what is needful on the Sabbath even though it is a day of holy rest it is it is uh, necessary to feed the body on the Sabbath day and to do that which is necessary on the Sabbath day but you see he's challenging again these Pharisees challenging their man-made rules challenging uh, the fact that they believed that through these things that they could earn favor before God so having answered the Pharisees uh, the Lord Jesus thirdly this morning applies what he says look at verse 27 and he said unto them the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath now here is a, a point of teaching and it's important that we we teach the Word of God uh, and there is teaching here concerning uh, the Lord's day uh, that the Sabbath was made for man that God instituted the Sabbath day in Genesis 2 he laid down the rule uh, that it was to be a day of holy rest the New Testament has changed the day to the Lord's day but that basic command still applies not only to God's people but to all people it is for man as man not for Christian as Christian it is for man as man uh, that the Lord's day is to be a, a day of holy rest but the point that the Lord is emphasizing here is that it was made for man's benefit it was made to be a blessing for man uh, a blessing for our bodies and a blessing for our souls uh, that it was to be a day of holy rest so that man could be blessed and that man could benefit from it <clears throat> the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath it was not given by God 
so that it will be a heavy burden upon man. And that's what the Pharisees have done. They have caused the Lord's day to be a heavy burden. They have changed what was meant to be for man's benefit and for man's blessing to be a heavy yoke, a heavy burden upon man. Why did they do that? Well, I think we've mentioned the main reason because they believed that through keeping these rules they could earn God's favour, which was completely wrong. But I think there's another reason as well. That by nature, man will all, always find it more appealing, more appealing to obey man-made rules than to follow God's intended purpose for the Lord's day. What do I mean? Well, I mean this, that man will always be more satisfied with doing a tick box exercise of do's and don'ts for the Lord's day than meeting the challenge of God's purpose for this day. And what is God's purpose for the Sabbath day? Well, it is that the Sabbath might be a delight. A delight to our souls. A delight to us that we're to rejoice in the fact that God has uh, been so kind and gracious to, to man that he has ordained, he has commanded that we are to have a day of rest in order to worship him, in order to be thankful for him, for all his blessings and for all his benefits towards us, that he has ordained a day that we can especially worship him and gather together to worship him and to have fellowship one with another as we worship him, a day where we can rejoice in his salvation, that we can rejoice in what he has done for us, that he has saved us through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. A day when we can uh, seek his face, a day that we can gather around his word uh, and, 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 uh, and really meditate and, and, and enjoy his word and, and to count uh, uh, this whole day a delight for us. And you see, man will always seek to, to in some ways, uh, seek another way rather than delighting in the Sabbath. And one of those ways is by keeping man-made rules. Ah, oh, as long as I do this and I don't do that, I kept the Sabbath. But have you kept the Sabbath? I challenge us today. Do we keep the Sabbath? When I ask that question, I don't ask, have you not done this and have you done that? I ask the question, have you counted the Sabbath day today with delight? Do you rejoice that this is the Lord's day? Do you rejoice that you are now able to lay aside your, your daily labour? That you're able to lay aside those things that are, are not necessary? That you're able to lay aside your work and your leisure that today you can focus upon the Lord especially and that you can worship him and that you can worship him not only in one service but many services that you can worship him throughout the day that you can spend the day thinking about him and thanking him for all that he has done that you can spend the day uh, rejoicing in his salvation, that you can spend the day reading his word and pondering it and meditating upon it and talking about it uh, uh, and seeking his face. 
Do you, do you count this day as a delight to your body and to your soul? That's keeping the Sabbath. It's not a tick box exercise like the Pharisees did of do's and don'ts. But it is saying, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will get up on the Sabbath day and say, thank you, Lord, that I have a day before me that I can rest from my labours. A day before me to worship you. A day before me to, to read your word. A day before me to seek your face. A day before me to fellowship with other uh, believers. Uh, to, 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 to meditate upon the word of God. A day of thanksgiving before me. That I then at the end of the day can lay me down and sleep and say, Lord, thank you for such a blessing. Thank you for giving me this day that has been such a blessing to my soul and to my body. That indeed the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. finally in verse 28 there is that announcement therefore the son of man is lord also of the sabbath what's what's the lord jesus saying here as we draw to a close therefore the son of man is lord also of the sabbath well i think it's an astounding announcement that he makes here he says that he is lord of the sabbath he takes us back to the beginning, you see, the Sabbath was ordained at creation. When God created heaven and earth and sea and all that is in it, he rested on the seventh day and he blessed it and he sanctified it and he ordained it to be a day of holy rest. And the Lord Jesus, when he said that he is Lord of the Sabbath, he is claiming here to be the one who instituted it. He's claiming to be the one that ordained it. He's claiming to be the creator. He's claiming to be the, the, the one who, who spoke, let there be light, and there was light, and spoke creation into existence, and spoke the Sabbath day into existence, and spoke the blessing of the Sabbath day in Genesis chapter 2. That he is the sovereign ruler and creator of heaven and earth. Lord of the Sabbath. And that is truly astounding. That here stands before these Pharisees. One who created the Sabbath day. But in Hebrews... We're reminded also that the Sabbath day points us to our rest in Christ. And not only is he Lord of this day called the Sabbath day, he is also Lord of our Sabbath rest. What do I mean? Well, I mean this if we're to truly have rest for our souls, rest from our sins. That rest is to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. That if you're seeking today the forgiveness of your sins, that forgiveness and that rest is to be found in the Lord Jesus and in him alone. He is Lord of the Sabbath and he is Lord of our spiritual rest that rest is found in him and him alone come unto me all ye that labor he says and i will give you rest but the letter to the hebrews also tells us that 
the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, is a foretaste of an eternal Sabbath in heaven. And our Lord is Lord of that Sabbath as well. What do I mean? Well, I mean this, that eternal life and eternal rest is found alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life is found through the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Lord Jesus Christ. That if you believe and trust upon him, not only will you find spiritual rest for your souls in this life, not only will you find the forgiveness of all your sins, but you will find eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. And know a Sabbath that never, ever, ever ends in heaven itself. And so our Lord is Lord of the Sabbath. And in this small little incident that takes place, where the Pharisees accuse the Lord of doing that which is unlawful, Mark points us to the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ truly is Lord of the Sabbath. He created it. We find rest for our souls in him and him alone. And through believing in him, we shall find eternal rest in heaven for us. Well, we'll continue next Lord's Day, God willing, in Mark chapter 3.
God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon us and remain with us this Lord's Day and forevermore. Amen.